All right, this is the Committee of Community Business Development. This is Monday, December 23rd, 2019. We're at 630. I have Councilor DeFlorio. Yeah. I have Councilor Capone. Yeah. I have Councilor Napolitano. Here. We have three members present. We do have a quorum. Three members uh, present. We do have a quorum. Please stand to salute the flag. <laughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Clerk, please read the first item on the agenda. Collectively, Madam uh, Chairman, uh, are these all the same yes. petitioner? Yes, they are. Let's spend the rules and take all three items collectively, please. I have a, do I have a second? A motion to take all three collectively. All in favor? All, right. all, all right. opposed? These? The ayes have it. These are petitions offered by Council Richard L. Sewell as president. The Denver City Council, item number one, the Denver City Council hereby approves a new lodging house license for 51 Cottage Street. Item number two, the Denver City Council hereby considers a new lodging house license for 450 Ferry Street. And item number three, the Denver City Council hereby considers a new lodging house license for 11 to 13 Ellsworth Street. Councilor Capone? Do we have the petition? If we could please have the petition before us. Is the petitioner in the audience? If you could please come up. How are you? Is uh, his mic on? Councilor. Yeah. Hello. Please state your name for the record and your address. My name is William Hardy. Our business address is 1904 Washington Street, Boston, Massachusetts. Thank you. Councilor Capone. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Through you to our guests. Good evening. Um, these, uh, these properties, have, have you got any experience with running rooming houses or real estate or anything like that in general? Great question. Yeah, so uh, the owning entity is Boston Real Estate Collaborative. Okay. We currently operate and own four lodging houses in Boston, three in Southie, one in the South End. We recently were operating one, did not own one in downtown at 49 Temple Street. That was sold. So these additional acquisitions will just add to that portfolio. Okay. The owning that what who owns these lodging houses is Boston Real Estate Collaborative Lodging House Property LLC, and I'm the head of property management and leasing for that organization. Okay. And and how long have you been involved with either that organization or in general doing real estate? That's a great question. Uh, this would be coming up in a year. Okay. All right. Um, I don't have any questions. You got some big shoes to fill. Uh, Bob ran wonderful uh, properties, so uh, he said uh, nice things about you. You seem like a nice gentleman. Uh, I have some experience with it, so uh, I, I don't have any other questions. Thank you. I'd like to invite the uh, city clerk up, if it's okay, with the board. Thank you. Yep. Councilors, uh, Sergio Canelio, City Clerk for the City of Everett. Um, we look forward to working with the, the new owners. Um, so all the paperwork is in order. I want, I want to make sure I state that. I will state it again at the meeting. But I, I want to take the time and uh, to definitely mention that Mr. Lacadero has been amazing throughout his tenure here. I mean, I've known him now 15 or so years, but the last five years back in the office, and he is one of the only ones that are always here, even for his renewals. Uh, we're going to miss him, uh, but I know he'll be around, but uh, I just wanted to make sure I stated that. He, he's been a, a great um, partner for the city of Everett and, and always very uh, forthcoming and willing to work with me in the office, so I just wanted to make sure I stated that. I, uh, any further questions? If not, I do have a question from the chair, if it's okay. Thank you. Um, now, on all these properties, is, the, is your name and telephone number 24-hour service uh, posted in case there's a problem or an issue yep so every single property has every license uh every life safety approval and then every single property has <laughs> our boston real estate collaborative management email my cell phone actually my cell phone's not there our 24-hour uh, emergency cell phone is there which is directly managed by one of our property managements property managers that are on call throughout okay. the month. So you do have someone on call 24 hours yeah. a day is yeah. actually my question. Okay. There's a total of uh, four property managers at our firm. Very good. All right. Thank you. I don't have any further questions. Any further questions? If not, excuse with the customary thanks. Before I excuse you, I just want you to know that uh, we, the full body will be voting on this at 7 o'clock tonight. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, I'm sorry, Councilor Napolitano, did you have any questions? Or? No, it's going to motion uh, once they leave, motion for favorable action. Okay, so excuse with the customary thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I have a motion for uh, favorable action. Do I have a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Motion to adjourn? I have a motion to adjourn. I do have a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. You have adjourned. We're going to actually be giving a, a citation. Uh, if we could come to some type of order, a little quietness, please. Thank you. All right, before our meeting tonight, we're going to, like Council uh, McKinnon said, we have a few citations going on tonight. Uh, the first one, um, very special night for her and her family. Uh, Shana has been boxing since 2014. She started looking for something to help her gain confidence in herself. So she decided to take up boxing. Uh, she skipped amateur on right to professional boxing in 2017. She went to white, late, white, yeah, lightweight class and was currently undefeated. Shana's coach, name is Joe Lake. He's the same coach who trained Everett's own Richie Lamontagne. She signed with CES Promotions out of Providence, Rhode Island, and is hoping to continue her professional career. Actually, uh, she was telling me that hopefully, if everything goes right, she may be fighting at the Encore this summer in Everett. I'd like to invite Shannon up here, please. Be here very known to all Everett City Councilor and his honor the mayor offer the sincerest congratulations to Shana Flopiano in recognition of returning professional for women's professional boxing and being undefeated. The entire city government extends its very best wishes on this occasion and expresses the hope to continue good fortune going in the future. Given the 23rd day of December 2019 sponsored by myself and the whole city council. Congratulations. Thank you, everybody. This is an absolute honor to be up here today. Thank you so much, Richie, for this opportunity. It means a lot to be recognized by my community. I'm very proud to be from Everett, or the City of Champions, and I promise to continue to work hard to keep that going. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. We'll take a quick moment for the family to come up and take some pictures, and then we'll take pictures with the entire city council. Family, I'll take it with them, and then the family, and then the entire. 
Yeah, I love it. Do it. Katie. Okay, you want to eat hard? You can do it immediately. All right, all right. Years ago, we're going to be afraid. We're going to face off. Yeah, yeah. That'd be a good fundraiser. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Come here, Rose. Get up here. We have another fight next month, so we're hoping for another win. Windham, New Hampshire. Same thing. Uh, we're going to be presenting more citations, uh, if we can have your attention. Uh,
Councilwoman DeFlorio. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is uh, bittersweet. Uh, the citation is for our president, who did a great job. And I'm sure we'll be seeing you around, Council President, but we will sadly miss you on the chambers, at the chambers. So this is a citation. Uh, the entire city government extends its very best wishes on this memorable occasion and expresses the hope for continued good fortune going forward given this 23rd day of December 2019, sponsored by the entire Everett City Council. We wish you a lot of luck, and I know you'll be spending a lot of time with your granddaughter. You. God bless you, and God bless your family. Thank you very much. One more present for our good friend Rich, as he's the outgoing president. Uh, Rich is a lot more than a counselor to a lot of us in this room. As Councilwoman DeFlorio said, he's a friend. Uh, he's someone that's always there, whether it's cleanups, whether it's children's events. He's a lot more than a Monday night vote. And he's a dedicated member of the community. And uh, I know he's not going far, and I hope he'll be back soon. Uh, this is a gift for you, Rich, as the outgoing president. It says, whereas in the performance of his duties as president, he has ever been actuated by a spirit of fairness and the desire to maintain harmonious relations between himself, the members, and the entire city government. His efforts in this direction have won him the respect and goodwill of his fellow members, thereby enabling him at all times to maintain the dignity of his office. Therefore, be it resolved that in full recognition of his valued services, this testimony will be presented to Councillor Richard Della Sola, Jr. We also have presentations that are going to be delivered from our mayor, the senator, and our representative from the districts. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Richard, I will definitely um, miss you here on the, in the city council. Um, <laughs> It wasn't ever personal with you. It was always about business. So um, I hope to see you back. Um, but I know uh, we talked about maybe serving on one of our city's boards and commissions, and I think you uh, will be a great fit in the Public Works uh, Board, and I think we're going to head towards that way. So you may see his name appear before you soon. As we know, Richard works in the utility, uh, utility company, and he knows all about the handbook and really about what needs to be done in the communities when it comes to doing uh, work in the city. So. Uh, uh, I know I'll, I'll be dealing with you more, uh, but uh, citation for you from, uh, from my office, and I'll read it. Uh, being known to all as Honor Mayor, Mayor Carlo Di Maria, for my most sincere congratulations to Richard Della Sola. On behalf of the City of Everett, I commend you on your many years of dedication and service to the City of Everett. Your unwavering commitment to the residents of the city has been significant. You have truly made an impact on the lives of many. I look forward to working with you in the future through the many opportunities the city offers. May you enjoy continued good health and happiness given this 23rd day of December 2019. Congratulations. Good evening, everyone. It's a great honor to be here tonight to, um, to say goodbye, but also thank three members of the City Council. And first off, I want to just thank uh, my good friend, one of my closest friends, uh, Council President Rich Della Sola. You know, when you look at people who are serving in, in public service, you look at a guy like Rich who has no agenda, no ego, just wants to serve the people. 
And I know that he will be back on the council hopefully very, very soon because we need people like Rich Dallasola serving the public. Uh, he has been an inspiration to so many people in this community. He has been a leader and not leading by boisterous yelling and screaming, just by example. And that is the type of person that I want as my city council and my representative on the city council. So thank you, Rich, for your service, for your many years of service. I know that I also want to thank his family for sharing him with us and for sharing the city with him as well because it's not just individuals that are sitting in this chamber, but also our families who also bear the brunt of the service as well, the good and the bad, the good and the bad. But I have a citation from the State Senate to my good friend Rich Delasola. We're hereby extend congratulations to Council President Rich Delasola in recognition of your many years of dedicated public service to the residents of the city of Everett. And it's signed by myself and our Senate President, Karen Spilka. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Rich. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, on behalf, first of all, uh, on behalf of the Massachusetts House of Representatives, it is a pleasure to be here. My old uh, Little League buddy used to see me on the bench quite a bit. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> coach, where, oh, there you are right there, Coach. You know what I mean? Thanks for not putting me in. And, Mr. <laughs> Mayor, I've got to say one more thing, all right? Um, when I was president of the Board of Aldermen there, they only gave me like this little hammer, you know what I mean, and said goodbye. He's getting plaques and accolades, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it, it couldn't be more than well deserved. I'm teasing my friend um, a little bit tonight, but uh, he is he is the epitome of a great counselor. We all hope to see you back here you. Uh, very soon, <clears throat> okay? Um, so on behalf of the Massachusetts House of Representatives, Rich, um, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers sincerest congratulations to you and your family in recognition of your eight years of dedicated public service. The entire membership, all 160 members, uh, expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors given this 23rd day of December, signed by none other than the Speaker of the House himself, Robert DeLeo, uh, and as your state rep, the sponsor. Thank Congratulations, you. my Thank friend. You. Nice Thank job. You. A few words from our council president. That's the most, uh, most awards I ever got, Joe, since Little League. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to have to clean my daughter's room out because she's not with us anymore and uh, put the plaque somewhere. All right? Thank you. I right, thank all the city councilors through the eight years I've been up here. Uh, pretty much the same faces, but they had the same goal. It's just that we're here for the people. As Councilor Simonelli always says, we're here for the people. And the councils that are here now and the councils in the future, we're here for the residents of Everett. And it's a great honor for the eight years I've been here. And I just want to touch on myself, Council McKinnon, and Council Simonelli. I know our last name has had an impact on the city through the years that we've been here and my uncle was here. So I know we have an impact on the city. As good as it is, it's just going to get better. And I want to thank everybody tonight for what's happening, what was in the past and the future. Anybody, no one can predict what is gonna happen, but I wanna thank everybody again for this great moment. Thank you very much. Thank you. There's a, another citation that we'll be giving out to a member that is going to be leaving as well, Councilman Simonelli. So 
I am here to present the citation to outgoing Councillor Steve Simonelli. Come on up, Steve. Steve is a third generation elected official in this city. Uh, he's someone that I respect tremendously because he's never swayed from his convictions. He's not afraid to be the one no vote on any item. He's not afraid to voice his opinion, no matter how popular or unpopular it may be. And what he's gone through, what he's battled, and what he's overcome is something that I admire tremendously. Um, his family has made a huge impact in the city over the years. And uh, I know he's not going far either. He's going to continue to be active at the church. He's going to continue to be active in the community. And I'm sure we'll be getting text messages from him letting us know how he feels about certain issues. So, Steve, without further ado, be it hereby known to all that the Everett City Government, in his honor the mayor, offer their sincerest congratulations to Councillor Stephen Simonelli in recognition of your 12 years as a city councillor and your commitment to the city of Everett. The entire city government extends its very best wishes on this memorable occasion and expresses the hope for continued good fortune going forward, giving this 23rd day of December 2019 by all of your colleagues on the city council. By and for the people, Councilor Simonelli. That was his platform. He'll continue to maintain that. He thanks you for your enthusiasm during his disability, and he appreciates the City Council for representing uh, disabled people. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> if we could have the mayor up to present his citation. Yeah, you got to stay for two more. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah. For you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Steve, um, <laughs> Steve Simonelli and I, um, uh, ha he was he was always um, truthful with me. You know, he would text me. Prior to that, uh, he would call me, and he'd voice his displeasure of an issue or his pleasure on an issue, and ask me to take something out, put something in. Um, but never was personal with him either. You know, um, uh, you know, my wife and I one day were up in Newfound Lake, and we were, uh, <laughs> we, you know, we're driving around Newfound Lake, and here's this guy, you know, I'm saying, he's, those little, little shorts, and he's walking around the lake, and he's, I'm saying, that looks like Steve Simonelli. So I pull up to him, and there he is walking up there, getting some exercise, right? Um, and it was just, it was just, it was just uh, out of character to see him out in Newfound Lake, and, uh, uh, but I've had some uh, uh, great moments with Steve. Um, and I'm, I'm going to miss him serving on the council, um, and maybe he can actually uh, come back and serve on one of our uh, one of our boards. Maybe even the disability commission uh, would be something nice that maybe you would like to do. Um, but uh, just keep you involved. And like and like Anthony DePero said, three generations of Simonellis. I served with uh, his dad um, as an alderman, um, who uh, Peter was uh, was uh, I believe I served with Peter. I'm thinking I did. Yeah, I did, right? I served your dad. Um, and um, I serve with some great people like your dad. And I just want to thank you, your entire family for what you've done for our community and all the years of service. Um, uh, truly, truly a pleasure for me to have, uh, to have known you and your family. And I wish you uh, lots of health in 2020. Uh, and we hope to see you uh, bouncing around the city. I know you will be. I mean, definitely is a shoppers dressed city councilman. <laughs> Uh, you don't have much to compete with, but uh, you would definitely have a shop at Stress City Councilman. Uh, uh, yeah, yo, Mike, you make plenty of money in the city of Everett. Um, Mike, uh, Steve, be it known to all that is on the mayor, Mayor Kyle Dean, I offer my most sincerest congratulations to Stephen Simonelli on behalf of the city of Everett. I commend you on your many years of dedication and service to the city of Everett. Your unwavering commitment to the residents of the city has been significant. You have truly made an impact on the lives of many. I look forward to working with you in the future through the many opportunities that the city offers. May you enjoy continued good health and happiness given this 23rd day of December 2019. Thank you, Mr. Maria. It was an honor and a privilege for me to serve as your counselor representing Ward 2 over the eight years. Thank you very much. Can we now have our state senator?
going to be here till 11 o'clock tonight. <laughs> Won't be the first time. Right, so, right, right. Won't be the first time. <laughs> so I have a citation as well for my, my friend, uh, Steve Simonelli. So uh, I had the honor and privilege of serving with Steve in the Common Council uh, for a couple of years prior to going to the Senate. And I can tell you one thing for sure, that uh, Everett is in Steve's heart. We the people is not just a slogan for him. It's not a campaign line. He really has all the good things in his heart for our city, and he is really one of those people, when you look at, at Everett, you see, you see Seminelli. So I'm just happy to be here to, tonight to, to acknowledge his great work, but also to say thank you to you for not giving up. A lot of people don't know, he had some very, very serious challenges ahead of him. And he never let it show. He showed up at meetings, showed up at events, was walking the city. And as the mayor said, he is the best dressed guy in the community. But he was always positive, always happy, always laughing, always joking. And, and that's something that a lot of us can, can look at and, and emulate and, and copy that. Because uh, we all go through challenges in our lives and, and we all think things are really, really bad at points and to have the attitude that Steve had and making sure that he didn't let anyone else think that he was down and many times bring all of us up when we would see him. So that is really a testament to the, the person that he is and we're gonna miss him in the city council. And thank you for all that you've done for your, your family as well. This, the Simonelli name is a very, very good name in the community and you have uh, brought even more honor to that name as well. But I have a citation for you from the State Senate and it's in recognition of your, again, many years of dedicated public service to the residents of Everett, 12 years of service. And I'm not going to read the whole thing again uh -huh. because we're going to keep reading all the citations over and over. But this is signed by Senate President Karen Spilka and myself, Sal Domenico. Congratulations and thank you to you. State Representative. Uh, thank you, Senator uh, D. Domenico, for those kind words. I hope that I'll be able to live my future as the way you spoke. Thank you very much. on big daddy you know what I mean the, the boys at the shovel can wait <laughs> but uh, once again uh, ladies and gentlemen congratulations to Stephen great family name Stephen and I are that I've been told a long time ago we are the only two third generation city officials uh, it's something that both of us are extremely proud of. Um, he led the council um, with the love of the city in his heart. Um, no question about it. Um, no matter where he stood, we knew about it. If he didn't like one of my votes, he let me know. And I go, I'm not the mayor. Talk to the mayor. But, but believe me, um, the love of the city is no other greater councilman than uh, Stephen for that. And so congratulations. Um, I will read mine, Stephen, you know what I mean, all the way through, because I don't have anything better to do tonight, you know what I mean? But uh, once again, the uh, Massachusetts House of Representatives Office is sincerest. Congratulations to Stephen for your 12 years, 12 years of dedicated service. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you tell me. Thank God, Serge. <laughs> Wait till Leo comes up here, but yeah. But once again, the entire I'm only membership. Here for those. Um, all three of them. Serious congratulations. <laughs> I offer mine, Stephen, because you and I, <coughs> you and I are the first. Okay. I mean, so congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> Thank you very much for those kind words, Representative. I never realized what an elite group that we belong to. We must be like cousins. Thank you very much.
We have one more citation. We saved the best for last. Council McKinnon. <laughs> no, there's a time limit. I've been timing everybody tonight, so. <laughs> we got it down. But I'll be brief. Well, we do. Every, I, now. It's been a pleasure to serve with Councilman Simonelli, who I've known his family all my life, Councilman Della Sola, all my life, his family. But Councilman McKinnon and I go back as friends, not best friends, but friends, for over 35 years. I didn't think there was best friends up here, but... Uh. Yeah, that's true. Well, you heard that's a term loosely used up here. Yeah. But uh, needless to say... Uh, Councilman McKinnon uh, has been chairman of Public Safety, the Ways and Means Committee, and as everybody in the city knows, the opioid uh, committee issue. And when he's the chairman, when he sits up here, he knows how to run a meeting, and I can tell you that. I've been up here quite a long time. We were all young and full heads of hair, and actually, that's right. Well, you know, 18 years ago, 19 years ago, actually, we, uh, Leo said, I would like to meet, uh, visit Mike Marchese on Ferry Street. He had a little cafe there. So it was a winter time, and uh, Leo said that he was interested in running for councilman. And I says, oh, okay. And Mike was bartending. And I said, Mike, uh, Leo's interested in running for councilman, and I think it's a great idea, and Mike did too. And, of course, that year in 2001, he was sworn in as a councilman. He served 18 years up here which is a long time, Consecutive. consecutively. And that's why he's the senior member. Some of us had a break in service for whatever reason, but uh, uh, his family is outstanding. They're all sitting over here, as you can see. He's got two beautiful daughters, a wonderful son who was one years old when Councilman McKinnon became a councilman. He's now 19, he goes to college. Leo's two daughters are excelling. Uh, one is an FBI agent. I probably shouldn't say that, but uh, probably not. And I just met uh, and his beautiful wife, Tannis, who I've known forever too. And I want to welcome uh, maybe your future son-in-laws, Jake and Rob, who I just met tonight. But Leo is the kind of guy. He's a family man, a decent person, law and order. And you know, I, I had some, my father was sick for several years. Once a week he would come by with a cigar for my father. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. He is a gentleman, and we all can agree as councilmen that he is a fair person. Whenever he was the chairman of a committee, he just did outstanding work up here. As a matter of fact, in uh, 2005 I was president of the council, and uh, I said, Leo, we don't have much money in the celebrations committee. That was the year they eliminated the parade. We had $12,000, though. Doesn't seem like a lot of money, but what he did with $12,000 at Glendale Park. We had a small parade to go around the perimeter of Glendale Park. We had all the rides from the, uh, the arcade people. And he even got a flyby from the Navy uh, the Air Force, excuse me, the A-10 jets. People are looking up, and he timed it. I don't know how he did this, but of course he is a veteran also. But it's the kind of guy, and I've been up here next year, 2021 will be 40 years for me, but he's a gentleman, he's a friend, he's a decent person, he's a hard worker, he's retired as corrections officer, as we all know. And I wish you the best of luck. You're still only a young guy. He's only 54. Fifty-four. Don't let his receding hairline fool you. But uh, he's a gentleman, and it's a pleasure to give you a citation on behalf of the city council. It's from the entire city council. And I mean it when I say you were a great president. You're a decent person, and it's been a pleasure. And, you know, there's been times up here where things can get personal, but he, he's always been a gentleman, and we all can agree on that. And uh, this is 
uh, be it hereby known to all that the Everett City Council, in his honor the mayor, sincere his congratulations to Council Leo McKinnon in recognition of your 18 years as a city councilor and your commitment to the city of Everett. And we wish you the best wishes uh, on this occasion. It's signed by our city clerk, Mr. Cornelio, and it's sponsored by every member up here who all respect and enjoy your uh, sense of humor also. Thank you. Leo, I also have a citation for all you. I, uh, I will miss our conversations on the phone sure. right, when I can never get a straight answer out of you on an issue, on a <laughs> vote. Be like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sure. I'll be there. I'll be at the meeting. Not, not till the very end. Not till the very end. Can't never, commit to nothing. commit. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's uh, your military training. Mm -hmm. um, that's what kept me alive up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will definitely miss you. Uh, we were, uh, I, I would say, 99.9% .9 of the time on the same side of every issue. Um, anything that was good for the city of Everett, you always were in favor of it. And that's... Uh, as a mayor or any mayor or even a colleague of yours as I was, uh, that's all we can expect and ask for someone to be, uh, uh, to be fair and to um, be reasonable uh, if they were for or against something and give justification why you weren't, you weren't for something. And that you can always depend on you uh, for and uh, I think the residents of the city of Everett appreciated that in you. Um, uh, you know, you, you didn't lose your election. You decided not to run for re-election and spend some time with your family, mm -hmm. um, which is, uh, which is uh, honorable of you. And I hope to see you uh, in the city. Um, saw you the other day coming out of uh, the market. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I was sending my money away. Sending your money away to the money? <laughs> All yeah. my pennies. All your pennies. Um, but I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad to call you a friend of mine, and I'm, uh, uh, I'm also in a colleague. And yeah. uh, I look forward to... Uh, uh, talking about issues in, in the city of Everett with you uh, some more. I also have a citation for all you being known to a doll that is on the main mayor, Kyle Dean. I offer my most serious congratulations to John Leo McKinnon. On behalf of the city of Everett, I commend you on your many years of dedication and service to the city of Everett. Your unwavering commitment to the residents of the city has been significant. You have truly made an impact on the lives of many. I look forward to working with you in the future through the many opportunities that the city offers. May you enjoy continued good health and happiness given this 23rd day of December 2019. God bless, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year. So I have to say, there isn't anyone else uh, in any city or town that I represent that has called my office more as a city representative for issues that are important, not just to the city of Everett, but just issues important to the general because public. Like that, like that's, that's great. That, that, that's very good recovery there, buddy. Yeah. Very good recovery. <laughs> but no, but, but he really wasn't just looking at issues here. He was looking at statewide issues as well. And before I continue, I, I was just sitting there. There isn't a night like this that can probably happen anywhere else in the state where you have the mayor, the senator, and the representative coming up and talking about three outgoing counselors, not just as counselors, but as friends. That doesn't happen. I don't know if that could happen anywhere else in the state. This is the culture that you have created as a group, and you have created as a counselor in this group as well. So it is really a special night. We take this stuff for granted sometimes in the city, but we're all very, very friendly with each other. We all know each other. And the fact that we can speak personally about each individual that's leaving tonight is, is very different than other communities around our state. And Leo in particular, as the public safety aspect, as, as Council Matuski mentioned, there were so many issues that he talked about, Representative McGonagall and I got calls from him, emails from him, and issues that he was very knowledgeable about. It wasn't just issues that he was concerned about. He was an expert in a lot of these issues in helping us understand issues that were up front before us in the legislature. So, Leo has been a very, very important piece of this part of the city, but also has lent his knowledge and skills to us at the State House as well. 
I want to thank you for your many years. It was an honor to serve with you as well on the Common Council for many were, years. They were, they were fun years. They were fun we years. We were both young. We were both young. That's right. We, and, I, and our kids were young back then, too. But <laughs> we're still young. But I also want to thank you, your family as well, as, for, for, as I mentioned, the Della Solar family, for also being a part of this journey with him as well. Because it's not just about the person standing and sitting here. Uh, you, we all take the arrows and we all get the accolades, but the family uh, has to deal with all of that each and every day. So thank you to your family as well. But I have a citation for you. And again, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Okay, Representative you. McGonagall will read the whole thing, but I won't read the whole thing. But it's a Council John Leo McKinnon in recognition of your 18 years of public service and dedicated service to the residents of the city of Everett. And it's signed by our Senate President Karen Spilk. Last but not least, <laughs> Joe. Wow, all these accolades, but uh, to be quite honest, all three gentlemen, all of us know here, um, and the newly elected officials will find out soon, you're not in this business to make money. You're not. You're here. Uh, because you care deeply about your constituents and the concerns of the city. Um, and to spend 18 consecutive years on the city council, um, it's a lot of hardship on your family, a lot of times that you miss because of certain votes you have to be here, certain events that you're obligated to be at. Um, I commend you. I commend you, Leo, as my friend and as a colleague. Um, but I'm really not here to give him this dedication for 18 years. I've got a dedication from the Speaker of the House that nobody even knows about, mm. okay? He has two years of dedicated service, okay, as a trash collector <laughs> in the city of Everett. So we wanted to honor you tonight with that from the Massachusetts House That's of Representatives. Awesome. Yeah. See, <laughs> no one even knew about that. No, now, Joe. I, <laughs> Thank you. And I, I, I have to tease him because he says, you know, I says, Leo, you had 18 years. He says, Joe, not only 18 years, I spent two years as a trash collector back in the day. Me and Dave. I go, do you want me to put that on the citation? <laughs> it is. It's right there, right now. I'm reading. It. But, 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 but once again, congratulations on your 18. I got to do it to him. Yeah, you know what I mean? I know. That's great. And I'm surprised there's still a lot of us left here when we, you know, when it was mentioned that your daughter. Um, as an FBI agent, I got a little nervous. <laughs> She's not even here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm only teasing him. Congratulations, Leo. Uh -huh. I mean that for everything that you've done. And once again, uh, Massachusetts House of Representatives honors you for your 18 years of dedicated public service, Thanks. signed by none other no, than the Speaker himself, okay, okay. sponsored by Joe McGonagall. Congratulations. Thanks, I'll just say a few words. I'll be brief. Wait a minute. Bring out the thing. Break it out. <laughs> you spilled your water. Um, I just want to say thank you to everyone uh, that's here. Uh, thank you to the city. It's been an honor and a privilege for me to serve them, the citizens. Um, it's been an honor and a privilege here with colleagues. I, I actually served with uh, a few of you with now that you are in the Senate and a mayor and a representative, but we served in the same chamber. So we sort of do uh, have some great work that we do here. And um, I'd like to just uh, say I took a piece of like everyone's campaigning and stuff like that. It made me a better campaigner. It made me a better person for doing that in politics. So, but I couldn't have done anything without my family, because my family we'd we'd get like this big map of the city, and then we'd tackle the streets, and we'd do the, and so we used to have fun with it. But um, will I miss it? Maybe. But I don't know if I'm going to have time to miss it because I'm very busy right now. I'm going to school full time. I'm going for my degree, finishing that up. 
And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that degree, and then we'll see where we go from there. So, but I wanted to thank everybody tonight, uh, especially uh, a good friend of mine that got me into the politics was Mr. Matusi and Mr. Marchese over there serving me a drink at Marchese's pop. That's how I started. Imagine that. Just got out of the, yeah, well, that's what happened. I was 14. That's how we got in his bar. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. So things have changed in Everett, my friend. They're not like the old days, so. But, uh, and they're changing for the better. I think that uh, we'll, we'll see some big growth coming. I think we'll see some um, different class stuff happening. I think you're going to see a holistic view, as the mayor had said, on a lot of the stuff here. Uh, the the building up of the um, city of Everett Square. I want to see that definitely happen because that's going to be our jewel at some point there. Uh, the T system that's going to be coming in from the senator and our rep, uh, that's going to be a plus, I believe, too, as well. So there'll be growth here, and I, I think that we're all going to be heading in the right direction. So, um, And I know that this body here will do everything that it can to make sure it's done right. So I just want to thank you. Thank you very much. We have just one more citation. Leo, uh, Councilman McKinnon, that was uh, very well said, I have to admit. Uh, could I have uh, Councilman uh, Simonelli and C former City Councilman Sire, please? As we all know, uh, for the last four or five years, Councilman Simonelli uh, is unable to speak. So he needed uh, some assistance here. First, his nephew was here for about a year. And uh, after him was a very knowledgeable person at City Hall, a councilman in the city for 10 years, always active at the Immaculate Conception. He's one of, m one of my good friends. Notice I didn't say best. But Nicky si Nicholas Paul Sire is a gentleman. He never missed a meeting, never missed any committee meeting. He was here whether it rained, snowed, or whatever the case may be. But he was here to work with our colleague who needed uh, assistance, Councilman Simonelli. He never missed a meeting. As a matter of fact, if Councilman Simonelli wasn't here, Councilman Sire was sitting right in the chamber waiting for him to arrive, and, and he would arrive. But on behalf of the, uh, this is from the entire member of the City Council and his honor, the Mayor. Uh, we want to thank you, Councilman, uh, former Councilman Nicholas Sire. You're a great man, and it's a pleasure to have you in this chamber at any time. And I want you to know uh, you are always welcome here. You've served 10 years as a councilman. You served the last uh, two years uh, assistant councilman Simonelli. And for your commitment to the city of Everett, you are also being recognized this evening for your outstanding ability to assist our dear friend and the best dressed councilman up here. And uh, we all know that. The mayor brought that up, right? Best dressed? I was, I was <laughs> in the running years ago. But anyway, make a long story short, Councilman Sire, this is signed by the city clerk. This is an attest. This is uh, in the files of the archive. And you, you're going to have a copy of this. And I want to uh, say hello to your wife, Diane, wonderful woman. Uh, be it hereby known to all at the Everett City Council and his honor, the mayor, offer their sincerest congratulations to Nicholas Paul Sire on your outstanding work assisting Councilor Simonelli and city government and especially the Ways and Means Committee. The entire city government extends its very best wishes on this memorable occasion and expresses the hope of continued good fortune given this 23rd day of uh, December 2019 was drawn up by Mr. Mangan and signed by the city clerk, and it's been signed by all members. Congratulations.
no picture? Uh, we're going to take a picture after, so. Well, there's. I have a camera on my desk. Uh, Mike, Mike, want to give me my camera on my desk, please? Uh, well, you know, I've learned through the years that I better have my own camera. You know, you, you could take a picture, too. Now I need some. Mike, thank you. That didn't flash. Oh, did it flash? Okay, it did work. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilor, for those kind words. I'm going to admit to you and all the city of Everett that being a councilman for eight years in this great city under another administration was not half the work, not a quarter of the work, not any of the work, unless you're somebody's interpreter where you're trying to get across to the city council the meaning of the councillor and what he wanted to do and how he wanted to act and relate in the city of Everett. And for that opportunity, I want to thank Councillor Simonelli, and I want to thank the people of Everett, and I want to thank the city council and his honor, the mayor. And thank you very much, Councillor Simonelli. So we have one more, and I promise you that's it. <laughs> Excuse me. This is the Ways and Means Committee uh, 2019. We'd like to recognize the city auditor the Chief Financial Officer for the city. He, Mr. Eric Demas, could you please come up? We were gonna do this at a, uh, a reception after the meeting, but seeing how everybody's here this evening, and I understand Mr. Demas has to uh, be with his family a little later, so. But on behalf of, I'm gonna let Chairman McKinnon speak on this, but uh, as a member of the Ways and Means Committee, uh, all four of us, uh, uh, Councilman Marchese, Councilman Simonelli, Chairman McKinnon and myself, we said, you know, this guy, he brought all the information, all the important paperwork at every meeting, and that means a lot, you know, and he's the first, first auditor that uh, I can remember, because I've been on this committee for a few years, that actually comes to the meeting with any information that you need and I, for one, appreciate it. And I'm going to have Council McKinnon take the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, Council McKinnon. Just want to say thank you, Eric. Those meetings, the meetings that we had uh, for Ways and Means, they were uh, very good meetings. Reason being is because I felt that we got a majority of some stuff done in those. Uh, we had a good group that was with us. And uh, he made it, Mr. Demas, the CFO, made it run smooth through each one, uh, with everything being, you know, all proper, ready, waiting to go. So uh, I want to thank you for that. So thank you. Um, Mikey, why don't you read the? I'm fine. Go ahead. Thank you. Go ahead. Wait, read the. All right. Thank you, Chairman McKinnon. Be it hereby known to all at the Everett City Council, in his honor, the mayor, obviously, sincerest congratulations to City Auditor Eric Demas on your outstanding work and Chief Financial Officer and your commitment to the Ways and Means Committee in the City of Everett. Given this 23rd day, it's signed by all members of the Ways and Means Committee, signed by the City Clerk, and drawn up by Mr. Mangan. So what's in a nice picture right in front of you?
You'll open the meeting with a roll call, please. Yes. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor DeFlorio. Yes. Councilor DePiro. Here. Councilor Hamlin. Here. Councilor Marchese. Here. Councilor Matuski. Here. Councilor McKinnon. Here. Councilor McLaughlin. Here. Councilor Simonelli. Here. Councilor Napolitano. Here. And President Della Sola. Here. Eleven members present. We do have a quorum. Please stand, salute the flag. Can we stand for a moment of silence? Uh, last week we lost uh, Josephine Honey Cavaro. She was in the school department for 30 years and actually helped uh, Mayor Ragucci to his campaign. And Pat Carino. He had path cleaners up in Broadway, a business in Everett for many, many years, and also my neighbor. Moment of silence, please. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, make a motion that we take item number 27 off the calendar, please. Let's accept the previous meeting. Yeah, second the motion. Oh, we just get a couple things we have to do first. If we second, could. second the motion. Accept the previous uh, meeting. Second. Second it. All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. Council Capone. Mr. President, can we take items one and two collectively? Second, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Give me one and two, please. Mr. President, items one and two are public hearings. Uh, item one is a petition offered by Council Richard J. Delasula, Jr. as president. Extenant proposes to attach a small cell antenna along with all required equipment and fiber for its operation to an existing utility pole in the right of way located on 72 Union Street with electricity connection pole number 230. 2380, excuse me. Item two um, is that Extenant proposes to attach a small cell antenna along with all required equipment and fiber for its operation to an existing pole in the in the right of way located on 57 Irving Street with electricity connection pole number 2823VZ, number 2382. Council Capone. Thank you, Mr. President. Could we have the petition before us, please? Do you say your name, please? Council Capone. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, one of the pieces is on 72 Union. You recall at our last meeting, a resident came forward, was concerned about radiation being emitted from the units. Uh, have you brought any additional information with regards so, to that? I think it was, um, so we had addressed the issue regarding emissions, which is FCC regulated, and we have mm -hmm. a statement of compliance on file with the city. I think the second issue that she had brought up in the 2018 article related to appraisals into property values. And in discussing and actually being a broker myself, although I'm not an appraiser and I've worked with appraisals, it, it's a bit subjective and there really is no data in terms of, <clears throat> it's just a, a very subjective, um, especially when you're dealing with utility poles that already exist in front of properties. Um, it's arguable that you could say that they may go down or may go up because mm -hmm having service is an amenity um, also it helps public safety so it, it's it's really difficult to address okay so as far as emissions go 
You're just standing with the, the engineer statement that's on file. Correct. Okay. Thank you. I don't have any other questions. Any more questions for our guest? Excuse the customary thanks. Thank you very much. Make a motion to open public hearing. Yep. Second. Second. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. I'm going to ask three times if anybody's in favor of this petition. Anybody in favor? Anybody in favor? That part is closed. Anybody opposed? Anybody opposed? During the final time, anybody opposed? This section, this part is closed. Yeah, I would, I would add them okay. because they've already been done. Council Capone. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, if we could take items 29, 30, and 31 collectively with numbers one and two, where they're all the same quest. Seconded. All in favor? The ayes have it. I will read. Can you read uh, 29, 30, and 31, correct? Correct. These are all uh, petitions. Mr. Public Chairman, hearings. just a point of order. Did Cons we take a vote on items one and two? No. Let's no take they, a vote they're all the yeah, They're all okay. for the same petition. All right, yes. Thank you. Um, items <clears throat> 29, 30, and 31 were, were heard at public hearings at the last meeting. These are also petitions by the same company. Item 29 is excellent and proposes to attach a small cell antenna along with all required equipment and fiber for its operation to an existing utility pole in the right of way located on 55 Glendale Street with electricity connection pole number 299. 30 is excellent and proposed to uh, attach a small cell antenna along with all required operation, excuse me, equipment and fiber for its operation to an existing utility pole in the right of way located on 53 55 Central Ave with electricity connection pole number 1722. And 31 is excellent and proposes to attach a small cell antenna along with all required equipment and fiber for its operation to an existing utility pole in the right of way located at 252 through 292 Russell Street with electricity connection pole number 28. Council Capone? I guess it would be favorable action on number one. <clears throat> Second. Seconded. Roll call vote, please. <clears throat> yes. This is for 1, 2, 29, 30, and 31? Correct. It's for all five, but we're doing them separately. Yeah. Yes, for these ones, yes. Um, this is for item number one. Uh, favorable action, Council Capone. Yes. Council DeFlorio. Yes. Council DePiro. Yes. Council Hanlon. Yes. Council Marchese. Yes. Council Matuski. Yes. Council McKinnon. Yes. Council McLaughlin. Yes. Council Napolitano. Yes. Council Simonelli. No. And President Della Sola. <coughs> yes. Ten yeas, one nay. You have so passed item number one. Favorable action on item two. Second. Second. <coughs> call vote, please. Uh, Council Capone. Yes. Council DeFlorio. Yes. Council DePiro. Yes. Council Hamlin. Yes. Council Marchese. Yes. Council Matuski. Yes. Council McKinnon. Yes. Council McLaughlin. Yes. Council Napolitano. Yes. Council Simonelli. No. And President Della Sola. Yes. Ten yeas, one nay. You have so passed item 22. Rule for favorable action on item 29. Second. I got a roll call vote for 29, please. Um, Council Capone. Yes. Council DeFlorio. Yes. Council DePiro. Yes. Council Hamlin. Yes. Council Marchese. Yes. Council Matuski. Yes. Council McKinnon. Yes. Council McLaughlin. Councilor yes. Napolitano. Yes. Uh, yes. Councilor Simonelli. No. And President Della Sola. Yes. Ten yay, one nay. Uh, you have so passed the order. Move for favorable action on item 30, Mr. President. Second. Seconded. Roll call vote for 31, please. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor DeFlorio. Yes. Councilor DePiro. Yes. Councilor Hanlon. Yes. Councilor Marchese. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McKinnon. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Napolitano. Yes. Councilor Simonelli. No. And President Della Sola. Yes. Ten yay, one. Ten yays, one nay. Favorable action on item 31, Mr. President. Second. Council Capone. Yes. Council DeFlorio. Yes. Council DePiro. Yes. Council Hanlon. Yes. Council Marchese. Yes. Council Matuski. Yes. Council McKinnon. Yes. Council McLaughlin. Yes. Council Napolitano. Yes. Council Simonelli. No. President Del Asola. Yes. Ten yeas, one nay. You have so passed uh, all five orders. Thank you. And they were ready uh, at the end of the week. Uh, Council Capone. Open public participation. I'm going to, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it.
we, we did have one uh, person on the uh, list. It was Mr. Laquadero who left, but he did want to um, thank the um, council. He sent a message. Thank you for uh, the many years of um, working um, together. Um, and he, he feels he passed uh, the baton off to a great company. So he just wanted me to relay that message because uh, he had to leave. Thank you. Um, Motion to close public participation. In favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Thank you. And, uh, on the list, we do have the administration here, the mayor and his administration, to discuss the Pope John properties, which would be items 27 and 28. Motion, uh, motion to take items 27 and 28 collectively. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. I mean 27, please. Yes, items 27 and 28, uh, <coughs> Mr. President. Our, uh, 27 is an order offered by Council Richard J. Delasola, Jr. as President, that the City Council of the City of Everett duly elected, qualified, and acting on behalf of the City in accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 79, Chapter 40, Section 14, and Chapter 45, Section 14, and the City's Charter as amended and every other power and authority which is hereunto in any way enabling does hereby take on behalf of the City the fee in and to the property located at 888 Broadway, Everett, and identified as it as assessor's parcel A0020047A and described in a deed recorded in the Middlesex South Registry of Deeds in Book 10455, page 196, the property. Item 28, Mr. President, is a bond offered by Council Richard J. Dalso, Jr. as President, that the Everett City Council hereby approves the borrowing of $10,500,000 for the purchase <coughs> of the Pope John property. Council Capone and then Council Marchese. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I know that the uh, the thought process was uh, for elderly housing and for veteran housing. And I don't think anybody in this chamber is opposed to that. My concern, I raised it the very first time that this was brought up, is that I think we have a serious need for schools as well. <laughs> and all of our school systems are busting at the seam. So before we go and, and take a property for housing, I want us to take another look at at uh, using the property as a potential school. And I'd also like to know what the archdiocese role in all of this is because this is an eminent domain. And I know that I may have said that it's a friendly transaction, this is the way they want us to do it, but I'd, I'd like to find out a little bit more about that whole transaction, how long it's been going on, etc. And then more important than all of that is $10.5 million is a very large number and it's gonna commit this community for a very long time. And where we are at the very end of this session and we have a new session with new members starting in January, I think that this should be postponed until those new members who have been elected by the people have an opportunity to weigh in on it as well. So I'm asking that this be referred back so it can be resubmitted next term. Thank you. I get Councilor Marchese. <clears throat> You know, I, I also have a little, um, uh, uh, with uh, Council Capone, I also believe that, I uh, believe I feel that, you know, I look at the overcrowding at the Webster School, uh, Devon School down here that we don't even own. I mean, the price on the Devon School may be equal to what we're paying down there. We have kids up at the Everett High School. I mean, it seems like it's an opportunity time. I, don't, I see I'm different. I don't think $10.5 million is a lot to pay for a school. I don't know what kind of condition it's in. But I'm sure that it could be uh, addressed and come up the cold that we could take the kids and put them into one school that will handle the increase of children we also have. Um, I also I, I, I would uh, counsel Capone that we, we should have a little more time in this because I, I think that if we're going to build housing, we get the high school, which has sat there for 12, 14 years, and we haven't done anything with that yet. So I don't want to buy, another, buy an albatross for ten half million and let that sit there either. And I don't know what the obligation we're going to have after we buy it, who's going to own it, how it's going to affect the city of Everett. No matter what it is, it's going to be off the tax rolls. So it's going to be off the tax rolls. I think I'd rather see a, a, a new school in the city of Everett. That's my opinion. I don't think everybody has different opinions. But I, I wouldn't mind postponing this also uh, until later. Before we make a decision on this tonight. I, I need somebody to come out here and, and tell me uh, something different. I mean, I don't know what the school, the Devon School, I believe the lease is coming up pretty soon. Can I answer these questions, Mr. Chair? Uh, what do you have here? 
Excuse me? Who's here? Uh, no, we should talk. Should we talk to Mr. Divas? Should we talk to Well, you have the floor. You can invite whoever you want to. The mayor, if you'd like to, yeah. come on, maybe you can give us, uh, shed some light on that. Make a motion and have the mayor come before Second. us for questions. Second, all in favor? Thank you. Yeah, I have it. Thank can you. I, can yeah. I start, can we start with uh, Councilman Capone? Sure. Um, do you want to just start with your concerns again? Can you give me them one at a time, I just Sure. I wanted to, we're all in favor of housing. Right. We know we need it. But we also need schools too. Correct. And it's when, when you came out the very first time, not a surprise to you. I mentioned it then. Yeah. And I know that uh, uh, you had mentioned that you were looking for information about. So let's start with the schools. schools. Yep. So we just, Councilman Marquez, you just spoke about the old high school. <coughs> we have students in the old high yes, school. We, do. we have just begun the process of having every student in the city fill out the census forms. Mm -hmm. So I've told the schools. Until I build more schools, I need to be satisfied that every child that goes to Everett Public Schools lives in the city of Everett. You, yourself, when I served with you, when Mr. Forrest here brought the, the preschool program, you complained about that program, having kids from all over different cities coming into the school system yes, that do not live in Everett. We probably still have that problem. We have a high school, an old high school, that we have plenty of school space in, to continue to add classrooms. I have a facilities department better than any construction company out there that has, that, re, that they repurpose those classrooms for the charter school when we lease them out that now are occupied by our students. We are now looking at adding more space upstairs. We have plenty of space to, to configure more classrooms. We're looking at the basement for our vocational CTE programming so we don't have to build another vocational school. It can be done. So we have a school. Pope John, we don't need Pope John. It's not going to fit our purpose it, it, for, for our school. Uh, Pope John, I earmarked for a, a senior and veterans housing due to the fact that we have seniors in that area now. Okay? It's a clean area. It's in a major, you know, it's, it's down in Glendale Square. It's a, it's a nice spot for a senior housing development. But we got plenty of space for schools. We also are looking at. It was too overcrowded to build. It was at the rink. It was in Ward 3. You wouldn't have liked that. We, we looked at Florence Street Park. That wouldn't have worked. So we are looking at, but right now I need to be, I need, I need information to tell me that every kid going to school lives in Everett. Now they, they're, rolling that, they're, rolling that, that. they're rolling that program out now. They're, they're doing that. I will, you will see some kids, you will see some classes, you, you know, um, There'll be an effect to uh, some of the overcrowding. The classes, you, we, we say they're overcrowded. They're overcrowded for, um, you know, they're, they're, they're anywhere between, I think, 25 to, to 30 students in a classroom. Uh, they have made more classroom spaces. They've taken some classrooms out of the buildings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, but they're doing a good job educating children, okay? We are spending plenty of money on educating children. I think it's time that we spend some of our tax dollars on the people who built this community, our veterans and our seniors, okay? We, 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 the last 20 years, we've done a great job building brand new schools. We, we, you look at our bond, our, our debt schedule on, on, all our, on, our, on our budget, it'll show you all our monies are going to, uh, to, to, to pay back the debt on schools. There's not a dollar going back to pay money on debt for veterans or seniors, something that we all hear now you, you want to you want to continue on pushing it down the road to the next council. All you're doing is wasting people's time. You don't want to vote. Let's vote for it tonight. I'm not coming back before you again. It's on the calendar tonight. You want to postpone the vote? Won't be on the calendar. I, I want the vote tonight. So I answer your question. The schools, we're, we're taking care of the schools. We sat with the with the, uh, uh, the, the interim superintendent, the former superintendent, the two assistant superintendents. We, we, we know that there is somewhat of a need, somewhat of a need. My daughter, go, I think out of the entire group here, I'm the only one who has a child in the Everett Public School System. Okay, she goes to Lafayette School, 1,000 kids in the school. She's being educated very well. I go to her classrooms. I go to, her, I go to their, 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 their different events that they have. They're all very happy in the schools, all the schools. Yeah, there's a lot of kids in the schools. There's a lot of kids when I went to school too, okay? They get educated. 
Let's, you, want, you want to really do something with the schools? Let's get the buildings open until 5, 6 o'clock, extend the day in all the buildings. If you really want to be part of the community, part of the solution, let's get these buildings open all day long so kids have a place to stay until 5 or 6 o'clock. You know, there, you know, there's, there's a, you know, one of the, one of the uh, superintendent candidates, Paul Toner, he had spoke about that, was, was given no real, no, uh, uh, no really look at, at, at by, by the school committee for, for a position there. But he talked about working with the teachers union, keeping the schools open, extending the day schools. That's what we need. The buildings are sufficient for the amount of kids we have in the school system. We need some housing. People, seniors and veterans are getting pushed out of this community on a daily basis. If you don't want to vote for senior and veterans housing, that's what you're doing tonight. The deal with the archdiocese, the archdiocese does not sell property, okay? They do not like to do it. It's a friendly eminent domain taken. That's it. There's no other discussions. They, came, they had a number. We went back and forth. We negotiated. This is the number that they will take for a friendly eminent domain taken. Um, there, is, there is, you know, so that's your, your one question about the schools. I just have one question Go ahead. to ask you. Yeah. What are we going to do with Devon School when it um, so that, expires? So that is, uh, I, I don't, I think it's up now. I think, we, so the, 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 the uh, task force that we've assembled with members of the city council, yep. I think Mayor Hanlon serves that, Councilman DePero serves on it, Councilman McKinnon did serve on it leaving, so we're going to need another person to serve on that from the city council. And what will that cost for us, the, the taxpayers, to pay for that school? It, first of all, the tax, it, it comes out of Chapter 70. The school department pays the lease on, on, on the school department pays the lease oh, on we, the are we going to buy it or continue paying half a million dollars a year to lease it so we can buy it we can buy it mm -hmm. okay and then we buy it and then we and then we just give it to the schools right now like i said part of the chapter 70 formula they use it to pay the lease on the property so it would be probably in the in the grand scheme of things probably beneficial for the city to buy it so then the schools will have more money in the Chapter 70 to spend elsewhere. But the task force has that part of its, of its, of its topics. We're going to resolve that very soon. Mr. Demas has probably all that information. If you want to talk to him about or, or give him two weeks and come back before you about the entire lease, what we're paying, you know, what the value of the building is, should we just buy the, buy the building? So, but the, don't, let's not, let's not. Let's not do like, all right, let's just throw everything against the wall and see what sticks. No, we're talking about the Pope buying Pope John. That's all we're doing. Okay. Buying Pope okay. John for senior veterans housing. We'll deal with the Devon School. We are dealing with the overcrowding. We're working with the schools to put a policy in place that everyone I, I fills out the census. I understand where you're going with this. You know? My concern is and we, we got plenty of space we should develop new schools so we would kind of put everything all together. That's why the kindergarten in eighth grade. Now we have three different schools. We could accomplish one building. So the building here that could we go to... We'd have to on Pope John to build a school. Devons could go, Devons have, could go to a... Uh, housing, Webster School could put a nice little housing area, not an overbearing. My goal is to take building. the Whittier School offline, the old high school offline, the Adams School yep. offline, the Webster School offline. That's, that would bring, 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 bring big relief to many neighborhoods and find alternative locations to build new schools. You're looking at the other side of Route 16. That's where you're looking to build some schools. And that's, what, that's the only place you have right now viable properties to build is on the other side of Route 16. Other than that, you know, there really isn't much more unless you go down the GE Parkland and look at doing something on the Haskell property uh, behind Sky Zone Metro Rock to build a school in that area of the parks. We, we have identified parcels throughout the city where we can look to build a school. Policy I want put in place, I want every kid in the school system, family, to fill out the city census. Okay? I'm, I'm fine. I'm good. Thank you, Council. <clears throat> Councilor Florio, Councilor McLaughlin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, President. <laughs> Mayor De Maria, you brought this in front of us. When was it? Just before the election? Right before the election, and I thought everybody was in favor of it. Uh, so, uh, did everybody vote for this at that time? Everyone gave me the authority, authority to negotiate the, uh, a deal with the uh, Chises. Okay, yes. so what changed? I have no idea. That's, All right. That's All why I know I, is that I'm 100% in favor before the election and after the election. I appreciate okay? that. Okay. This is for veterans and seniors. Right. They've paid their price in the city of Everett. The veterans have paid more than their price. That's why we're free today, because of the veterans. And I have no problem. I'm asking no price, because, there's, because the veterans and the seniors are priceless. We're going to tax this building after it's built. There was a comment made, of, I think Councilman Marquez, you made a comment regarding the, uh, uh, it's going to cost us money. Oh, Councilman Capone, you made a comment. 
we, 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 can, we can bond this, this for 20 or 30 years. If we do the taxes that we'll generate off this, this building, if we do a 30-year note, we'll probably pay and then some pay it back. And then after 30 years, it's all, it's all you know, a gravy. We'll You're still going to get income from this property. We're still getting income from the property. It, it won't be full income. but it, No, we're still going to tax the property. Right. So it's, you're still going to get money to pay for the bond. Well, of course. It might not be 100 percent. I understand that. I, I, I will make sure it's 100 There will be no implications to the taxpayer. If I have to use CDBG funds, use, use my senator and my rep here to go after, after home funds, after the funds at the consortium, after, uh, uh, deal, uh, let's go, go after Secretary Keneally for funds. We, we went to Secretary Keneally's office, the three of us. He was, he was so excited that the a city was putting money up to build senior, and for, and, and senior housing and, and veterans housing. And he pledged his, his, his partnership with us to make sure that, that this development got off the ground and got built and would help us, would help us. Well, tonight I'm here to keep my promise that I gave Th you. In thank you. Thank you, Councilor. But I would like to answer, the, I think, uh, Councilman Cohen, you had a couple other questions in that, in that the three. Uh, I, have no, I want to answer the questions that they have. I want to make sure that Councilman Marchese well, feels I comfortable get, and Councilman Capone feels comfortable. I Councilman speak before. No, I want to answer their questions. Can I answer the questions? Answer they, the question? Did I answer their questions? Yeah. Did I answer your questions? I, I have one. Question. Oh, you got, there's two ahead of you. Okay, that's fine. All right. Okay, Councilman McLaughlin, Councilman McKinnon, and Councilman Napolitano. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I am. Um, I echo the comments Councillor DeFlora just made, which is that I supported this before the election and still do today. The problem that I have is if you break this down, it's very simple. You're going to spend about $5 million an acre of land on Broadway and Everett if you break this down. That's a lot of money. And we talk about friendly eminent domains. It doesn't matter friendly eminent domain or, or forceful domains. All friendly eminent domain means is that at the closing, They'll waive their rights, and they're not going to come back with lawyers. Councilman, K, uh, Councilman Goffin, I'm looking to buy a parcel on Ferry Street right now. They want over half a million dollars, and the parcel is 8,000 square feet. That's fine, but I just okay. want to make sure. Just that want to let you know the cost of Mayor, let, the cost of real estate. I'm not going to argue with you this evening. That being yeah, said, I'm, no, no, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. I'm, I just want to make it very clear yeah. that I'm not afraid to take a hard stance. So I want to make sure that we understand that I'm not going to be bullied. I'm not afraid to take a hot seat. Yeah. We're having an open discussion. Yeah. We're both on the same page. They're selling three families in Everett for close to a million dollars. That, that That's Jimmy. Said. Jimmy, what are the, you're a real estate broker. Jim, what, what's the three family in Everett going for these days? 7,800. Three family. Okay. No, no problem. It's in two but, families but ago. I don't <laughs> want to lose the attention of a friendly eminent domain is no different than an eminent. It's an eminent domain. End of story. However you no, clarify. No, it's not. It's, the archdiocese does not want. They, they, it's, this is the, what, how they wanted to do it. It's not how. This but is how they wanted to do it. And that's fine. But it should be how we wanted to do it because it's our money that we're spending. So they want to do it. It's one their way, building. And that's fine. And they can go ahead and they can do what they want to do with their building. Absolutely correct. That being said, I think that we have a new city council coming in in January, one being the ward that this property sits in. The individual is, is newly elected. And you actually have a veteran that sits in the ward that he voted for it when, when it gave me the authority prior to the election and wanted me to do veterans housing, a veteran in his ward. So this is actually the calendar year 2019. But it doesn't hurt anything by holding this over. <laughs> no, it we does. Lose not, what do we lose, Mr. Mayor? Progress. Progress. For two weeks. Progress, Councilman. It, 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 Councilman McLaughlin. It's been two weeks. It's been four weeks. It's six weeks. The same thing you did to my my, my, my members of my administration on the food policy. It, you know, I we, did, Mayor. Weeks and weeks uh, and weeks I, I and weeks after. Mayor, I did. Let, no, let, you're, you're, let, you're, let, let's get it done. We're not going to be accused of something that I did not do. Let's, wait, wait, wait. Council, I, I, I'm not blaming anybody. I'm not going back and forth. Politics. Here we go. Politics. Not going back and forth. Let's let's vote for senior and veteran thousand tonight. Yeah. Council. Okay. All right, Mike. Merry Christmas. Councilor McKinnon, Councilor Napolitano. All right, Councilor again. So that being said, I would just like to know how we generated to the $10.5 million. Where did we start with the negotiations? The appraisal came at $12.5 million. Where did we begin with the negotiations? Wait. I'd like to see a transaction just to show that we offered this and they offered that in, in a counteraction. I would like to see that in hard numbers. And I spoke with, actually, Mr. Souza today. He and I had a great discussion for almost an hour and a half over the phone today on a very long discussion about this topic. And we went back and forth on a lot of these points. And I, he and I had a great discussion today. 
So I'd we like sat at twelve five. We got them at ten five. But, but I would just like we to see. We took two million dollars like off the price. The emails. I'd like to see where. There were none. There were so conversations. Who discussed this? Who was at the table? I'd like to know the. Myself details. and the head of real estate for the archdiocese. So just you yourself negotiated this. Myself and the head of the real estate of the archdiocese. How many units can we build on this site, Mr. Mayor? As many as we as many as we want to build on the site. Well, that will entail change in zoning and creating and creating. In a new zone in Talking Michigan. senior veteran housing, 90% of them will not have a car. It all depends on how many spots you want a permit. When you have, a, when you, when you have them, you can, do a public, you can do a public shuttle system with them. You can do a, enter in a TMA with them. You, can, you have a bus system out front. Uh, you, you, know, you, you put the amenity spaces you want in the building so they don't have to leave like a market, like hairdressers. You really make it a full complementary senior veterans housing development. You can make it what you what we want to craft the RFP to look like. We will get. We, we want to make it a, a, a friendly place where seniors and veterans do not have to leave to do anything, to absolutely. do their shopping, you know, to do the their same page about that. right. We, so, we both agree on that. Absolutely right. correct. We waste our time building pa parking spaces. Look what they just did in Somerville. The Zero parking in Somerville. The building has been winterized by by the city of Everett. So that building is going to sit there for two weeks or the next three months. It has been winterized. It is closed down for the winter. Nothing There's is going to happen on that property over the next two weeks that we're going to slow down progress. Let's, let's be truthful. We're not going to slow down progress. Nothing's going to happen over the holiday season, over the holiday time that is going to slow down progress on this property. Councilman, we work every day, regardless of a holiday and not a holiday. We're working every day. We want to get the deal done and move on to the next thing. But I'd like to know how we got to the deal and make sure that it is sound for the city of Everett. It's ten point five million dollars. The building was the building was for sale. We 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 did it. We didn't. We knew the building was for sale. We heard about who would like who was looking at the building. We know there's a need for senior. I was just down at six six Main Street, with with all of you, I believe, just recently at a holiday party. The, the the last lady who just got in there took her four years to get into six six Main Street. She kissed me. She was so happy that she got in there. I think you all talked. I think you all talked to your seniors. They're all getting displaced out of the city. We're looking for small units, 300 square foot units, three, you know, the max, you know, as many as we can fit to complement the neighborhood, make them 70% Everett residents, existing Everett residents will have pre first preference on this development. Uh, we need senior and veterans housing in this community. That's it. You know, this, this won't be the last one I come before you with either. I'm going to con com continue on coming here for more housing for seniors and veterans because they're getting displaced and they need it. There's a, I think there's a seven-year wait list at the Co-op Villas. Seven-year wait list. Council McLaughlin. <clears throat> All set. Council McKinnon. Council Palta. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To our Mayor, uh, Mr. Mayor, I have. Uh, I'll be brief. Uh, we have. A number of like uh, elderly housing sites here but is this one going to be taking uh, federal or state money with it no uh, just or grants state, or anything just, like that just state money we're just gonna just gonna be state money only. State. yeah I don't want to mix the we won't be obligated with the disabilities to, and the um, what I'm saying is we yep. don't we won't have to be obligated to um, no. what has happened or transpired in our scene at 381 before. ferry correct okay and that's a commitment we have from you no you get, yeah, yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I mean, the, I represent the ward down there. Yeah. And uh, some of the people are concerned with that, and you need to understand that before you waltz into the seat. You need to go around that neighborhood there, Mr. Chiley, and actually uh, check it out and see what they're talking about. But as long as it can come with that type of commitment, <clears throat> that we're going to one have seniors from this community in there, and then veterans from this community first. I think that's a, that says a lot. So that we'll have our own people taken care of for us. So the way we get so it's seventy percent Everett residents, and they have to qualify. The people that will be applying will be qualifying. It's all mm -hmm. income based. So if, if there are any, if there are seniors in the city that uh, you know have too much money, that means they wouldn't qualify. If we can't find enough that will qualify, then they go outside. I'm sure by the parameters of of, of the income we'll find the yeah, guarantee 70 like percent okay. right yeah right all right that's uh, i mean that would be my concern because of what it's I'm what, the way we here. it's the way we write the rfp okay all we're doing so tonight just... is buying the property and the way we write the rfp is what we what we project will be in the building 
and and I will work with this council. I know you won't be here, but yeah. I'm sure I'll, I'll still hear from you. But we'll work with them on how we write the RFP to ensure that it's strictly seniors and veterans. Our seniors and our veterans. Our seniors and our veterans. veterans, right? Okay, because I mean, it's our people that are being impacted by right. this, and if they're on a waiting list for eight years, that's not doing anyone any good. Yeah, no, I was in the so. bank uh, the other day. Marge was retiring, and the gentleman came up to me, Mr. Monsini, and you know, trying to get into senior. It, it, it's 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 a daily bait, a daily occurrence that I get asked about how do we get into senior housing. Every day, there's not a day that doesn't go by and I don't get asked by senior how do I get into senior housing. I'm on the list here. I'm on the list there. I'm you know I'm unable to I'm unable to. Uh, pay my taxes and my water, uh, or you know, and I'm going to live here at my property. I can't eat. Um, I hear it all the time, mm. and we work with them through human services to get all the services that we can get them to ensure that they are able to. And we work with them if they have properties and you know whatever the issues they may have. A lot of them need to get they need to get out of their houses into senior housing. They can't take care of their properties. Thank you. I'll say, Councilor. Thank you, <clears throat> Councilor Paltano, Councilor Piero. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening. Um, how much is the, how much tax revenue has the Pope John property been generating up to this point? I mean, it belongs to the archdiocese. Is it an exempt? Yeah, they no, they don't pay taxes. All right, so this this move tonight uh, puts it back on the puts the property back on the tax rolls. Is that the, correct? This will be this property will be taxed. Okay, and I do understand some of the concerns about when we're talking about the uh, uh, the price and the uh, and why isn't it you know. It's important for a lot of people to understand. I mean, I, I, I worked with, through the Immaculate Conception on some of the discussions to St. Teresa uh, over the past few years. One of the, and people don't realize the Archdiocese doesn't want to get into a property situation. Right. You know, they, they've had, they, they learned early on that uh, people go in, buy the property, then flip it. So they get the price, at a, they get the property at a cheap price, and then they turn around and make in two, three times what they paid for it. So I can understand why the Archdiocese would want to sit down and work out a, a straight deal with the city. That makes sense to me. And again, we're also not talking about a vacant property here. We're talking about property with utilities, standing structure. You know, uh, 10.5 doesn't sound enormously high to me because I remember when uh, we got the, uh, when we went out and tried to get an assessment of what the old high school was worth, <clears throat> it'll come back something like 60, 60 million. It came, yeah, it came back at some ridiculous price, right? Right, and we know that it's really only worth what somebody's willing to pay for it. Correct. <clears throat> so again, I, I understand all that. I don't have a problem with that. I'm a senior. I'm a veteran. Uh, fortunately, I own a home where I where, I'm, um, where it pays for itself. I'm not in the same position, but a lot of a lot of people in my age group are and older. And you know, when you talk about delays to seniors, I mean, just this year, I've got several friends that are gone that have passed. They don't have another year to wait or another two years to wait. These waiting lists that it takes people to get along, how many people die off those lists before they're eligible to move in? This is a, this is a, a, a problem. It's a pressing matter. It is. Housing for seniors is, is, in veterans is a pressing matter at this moment. Yeah. It has been for a while. Yeah. I honestly, I just want to be straight with you. I don't have an issue with this. I've done my research. I don't think there's any reason, you know, I, I understand we were ready to vote on this at the last meeting, and I apologize for being out sick. I wasn't able to, to, to fulfill the minimum, but I'm here tonight, and I'm ready to vote for this. I think it's time for us to move on. The city is going to move quickly. The executive branch, your, your branch, you're involved with the negotiations. That's not our venue. Is that correct? It's correct. Okay. So having that, we either have faith that you're, you're bargaining on, on good faith on behalf of the city, or we don't. I do. So Thank you. You can count on my support on this, and I'll be ready to vote on this tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Council DePero. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Mayor, do we have an idea, a rough estimate, how many veterans and seniors in this community are either displaced or on waiting list, waiting to get into a facility like this? Uh, I think uh, Gene uh, Cristiano is in the audience. I believe Gene has that information. If you would, uh, and maybe Tony may have some of that information also. But if Gene, if you want to invite Gene up, is that okay? If she would like to, absolutely. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have it. 
And if anybody else from the administration wants to come up and talk, I mean, ta Eric, if you want to come up and talk about the taxes that will be generated, BJ gave you a, a, some numbers, if you want to give those numbers again. Just state your name and your position, please. Just turn that on. You can see I don't do this often. Um, my name is Jeannie Cristiano, and I'm the uh, Veteran Services Director for the City of Everett. I'm also a proud veteran. I'm married to a proud veteran. And my two sons are also U.S. Army veterans, and they're combat veterans. So, um, and both of these boys have served in imminent danger zones. So I, I'm a military mom as well, and speak to all those different uh, perspectives. It's a unique perspective. I'm also been able to sit here amongst this august body for about 10 years as a common counselor and then for eight as a an alderman. So, you know, I, I would like to think that you could hear what I have to say in the spirit that I have to say it. And I can't agree with the mayor more when he says, and I don't often get into it, that if you want to vote no on this tonight, it's a vote against our veterans and our seniors. Trust me, over in Massachusetts alone, we have 340,000 40, veterans that live here. 16.6 .6 of them have, have, have received service-connected pensions through their, the injuries they sustained while in war with combatants in faraway lands. And in, of that percentage, and so we have the 34%, 340,000, we have more than 33% of these veterans that are in dire need of affordable housing. Because right now, half of that number is in imminent risk of being homeless, okay? These are real numbers. This is real data. You can, you know, if you have a computer and you have the availability to uh, internet with a search engine, any one of you can look up these numbers. And I can tell you firsthand, okay, that I don't talk a lot about what we do every day in the veterans office. And yeah, I'm a little passionate about this. I don't share it. But every single veteran that comes into me they're not, they're not, the most, for the by and large, about 99% do not come in because they serve their country and want to share a story about this service. I love those little vignettes, but by and large, 99% of the veterans that come in to see me are in, are in need. They have lots of needs. Okay? And I don't like go every day and say, oh, let me tell you about the veteran that came in today. You know what? It's me and Jerry's job to do the best we can every day to provide them the services they need. And you know what? What's interesting is that 19% of the veterans in this whole country, you know, they, they really appreciate the express support of the non-veteran community for their service. But 81 of them percent realize that that express support doesn't go any further. Right. Like, so we show up on Veterans Day, right. and I'm there too, and that's it. Okay? There is a desperate crying need. Every single day, somebody calls my office, somebody comes into my office that's a veteran that's either homeless already are in imminent danger of, of being homeless. You know, this isn't some novel idea that the mayor has, and I, you know, I, you can tell I really support it, because we'd be joining Beverly, Bedford, Boston, Quincy, Lynn, I mean, the list goes on and on. Now, you know, and, and it's not, it, what, what all we're doing is just trying to leverage the property to better serve the needs of, the, of our seniors and our veterans. I mean, at the very least, they come home a lot of times damaged, okay? I can speak from firsthand experience that my two boys came home, and while they were okay, they were different. And you know what? It might have been that the twinkle in their eyes gone, 
or it might have been that they just behave a little differently. But as a mom, I know what, what, what affected how they behave. And it's war. I don't expect any of you to know what it's like. I've never experienced it. But they come home, and more and more of our younger veterans who I meet with have lots of needs. And they, in fact, have a much greater need for affordable housing than just the overall 31%. And when you look at that 30, 31 to 33% that we talk about in Massachusetts, the rates for our black veteran and our woman veteran, if you didn't factor in the numbers of veterans, just looked at the demographics, that number of 33% would rise even higher because our, vet, our black veterans and our female veterans have a 47% of, of, you know, they're gonna, they're in imminent danger of losing their home. They're gonna be homeless. And so, you know what, we can talk all we, we want, we can, we can, you know, you know, whatever your cause, but you know, if you wanna vote, because you think there might be a need for the schools, haven't we already, haven't we always stepped up as a community? I mean, I can remember my father was a councilman. We stepped up as a community to do whatever was necessary for our schools. This is a one shot, right? To say to our veterans, yeah, we recognize your service. And we shouldn't be pitting schools no, against our seniors and our veterans. Not. Absolutely this is, not. This is a separate issue. But the thing is, this is a separate we, issue. But we've always been there and we'll continue to always be there for our schools. But you know, I've never come up here to ask you for anything. And when I have had the opportunity to come up here, you've said to me, oh, just let us know what you need. Well, again, I don't talk about what happens every day in my office. It's my job, I love it, all right? And I'm gonna do it as long as I can, or the mayor will let me. But, you know, there are real If you keep needs. talking, it might be uh, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. You already broke the five minute rule. Come on now. Thank I'm you, sorry. Commissioner. I'm sorry, Thank just, I'm I'll, very passionate. I'll wrap Thank up you. my, my <laughs> time. Council I'll wrap up my time, Mr. Chairman, but you know, I, I walk in canvas neighborhoods in this city often, uh, whether I'm on the ballot that year or not. Um, and I gotta be honest with you, I don't think maybe one person has mentioned classroom size. Uh, the only issues with the school department has been expressing concern for better budgetary practices. The concerns I hear is, Anthony, I'm being forced out. Anthony, I gotta be out at the end of the month. Anthony, do you know of any apartments for a reasonable amount? And my colleagues have asked what the harm in is waiting. That's the harm in waiting. Right. I get emails and calls weekly that I have to be out next week. I have to be out next month. The more we prolong this, uh, the more that's gonna continue to happen. This is the greatest need for the space at this time. Um, I moved to postpone this two weeks ago so my colleagues could have a chance to vote that weren't here. Uh, I hear a lot of talk about separation of powers um, in this chamber, but there are things the administration is supposed to do and things we're supposed to do. So if we want to draw that balance, we need to know what our duties are as well and what they aren't. Um, I said I would support this, I'm going to continue to support it, and I'm ready to vote tonight. And I call for favorable action unless anyone else wants to speak. Okay. I, get, I have Council Hanlon. Uh, that council? I hope you can hear me with this here, but I'm in favor of this too, and I wasn't going to ask any questions until I heard something that you said that bothered me and something that Councilman Napolitano said. Uh, it didn't really bother me, but I question it now. You had indicated that you're going to do an RFP for this building, and you're going to have rooms that are going to be a size that the elderly would go into, whatever size you fit and everything, you know, which, which sounds okay. And that could be for like one or maybe possibly two people. Right. However, what are we going to do for veterans now that come along and have three children, like, like Peter does, you know, that are of the age where they need maybe a bedroom for the husband and wife, two bedrooms for the children, boys and girls? Are we going to take that into consideration? So it's going to be all strictly senior housing, senior housing for seniors, and senior housing for veterans. So it's going to be senior veterans? Senior veterans. Not, not guys just coming back? No. Thank you. Thank you. Nobody else wants to speak. I got Council Capone, second time around. Oh, good. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> so, I don't think anybody here is debating whether or not we want senior elderly housing. We do. But we have a lot of needs as a community. If you do, then you my, should vote my, for it well, tonight. Well, my concern is before I can vote for it, right. I need to know the particulars. And one of the particulars that I need to know is something that we discussed that first time. And just for the record, 
I said schools when I was here the first time. Uh, but my concern is what are we going to do to get it onto the rolls? Because right now, you know, we're talking about getting it back on the tax roll. Once we take it, we own it. It gets on the tax roll when we turn it over to someone. Either they buy it or we turn it over. It's a question I asked you that night as well. develop it so that's when it gets on a tax roll. we we put out an RFP we craft the RFP of what we want it to, to look like we put it out there someone bids on it they bid on it. they they become the, the the lucky recipient we'll call it it's this are they the lucky recipient at zero cost at zero are they cost paying for the land no zero cost so I understand what you're saying about the long term you'll get your 10 five back and then some we'll get the money we need to pay the note every year with the, with the taxes on it. Yeah, I, I get that. So and then the, over the long haul, we'll get beyond a ten and right, a half. Right. I'm not so sure I'm comfortable with the idea of just turning a piece of property over to someone free. I understand they're developing a project the way we want it <coughs> and how we feel. Do we have a same but it's a, it, they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're the affordable the housing developers. Right. It's like a group that's doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and then that's that's, that's, that's my that's, that's my sticking. And then that's what we're doing. the only other concern that I have is that I don't want the newly elected members not to have a voice in this project. That's my other concern. Well, so I believe I the elected the members that are sitting here tonight have a would like to vote for it because they were elected during a time that we 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 asked for me to to, to, to negotiate. Uh, to make a deal, but and they all were here and said yes. That was like October or September. Yeah. I mean, so what does that mean? That, that wasn't. Okay. What does that mean? If you want to go from that point of view, they, and you this, say that Fred, people who let's vote tonight. Them. Let's vote tonight. Let's cut the BS. Well, let's vote tonight. I, I can't. The I, matters before you. You yeah. want senior veterans housing? We last year we gave the school department twenty million, ten million. I think it was twenty million in two calendar years. We have above and beyond. Work, work diligently as a, as, a, as, a, as a city council and, and a mayor's office with the senator and a rep and their help just, re, just recently. We are taking care of the school kids. You want to take care of seniors? Vote for it tonight. If you don't, don't vote for it. I don't think it's as clean cut as yeah, that. Yeah, it is. No, it really yes, isn't. Yes, it is. It really isn't. It is. So the reality is this. Gentlemen, of course it is. And I'm just going to say uh, this final gentlemen. point. I'll say this final point, Mr. President. Right. I am a staunch supporter of elderly. I am a staunch supporter then of seniors. Then vote for if you're a staunch supporter But I have to tell you one thing. You want to take note with the affordable housing and seniors being pushed out of, the, out of the city? It's not just the seniors and the elderly. We have a desperate need for affordable housing in this community across the board. And the development that we're bringing in the city and, is not addressing and that. And that's what we're doing. It's not addressing and That's what we're doing. It. It's absolutely not that's addressing That's what we're doing. It. So if I that, vote against this tonight, doing. it's not against elderly and senior. It's because I then, don't see a plan in front of me. Allow accessory drug yeah, I don't see a plan in front to, to, of me housing. that tells me what I need to know. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're lying again to the public. Okay. I don't Com lie. Common gentlemen, practice. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Next speaker is Council Marchese. No, Council thank, Hall. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Council thank Simonelli, you, Mr. Chairman. First time. To you for Councilman Simonelli. Please call for the question. Motion was made. Second, and call for, call the, for question. the question is in order. I do I want to excuse you know, the, the members there. They, they're so excused. I guess There's no more discussion. Call Item for the question. Roll call vote, please. You. Item 27 for favorable action. Council Capone. No. Council DeFlorio. Yes. Council DePiro. Yes. Council Hanlon. Yes. Council Marchese. No. Council Matuski. Yes. Council McKinnon. Yes. Council McLaughlin. No. Council Napolitano. Yes. Council Simonelli. Yes. And President Della Sola. Yes. Eight yeas, three nays. You have so passed the order. Five for reconsideration, hoping it doesn't prevail. Uh, uh, the, the, it can't make a negative motion. You're just going to say uh, file for reconsideration. Second on that. Members vote. Second. All in favor? For reconsideration, Councilor Capone? Yes. Councilor DeFlorio? No. Councilor DePiro? No. Councilor Hanlon? No. Nope. Councilor Marchese? Yes. Councilor Matuski? No. Councilor McKinnon? No. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Napolitano? No. Councilor Simonelli? No. And President Della Sola? No. Three yeas, eight nays. Reconsideration has failed. Mr. Item Chairman, I move for favorable action. Councilor Capone? I mean, I'm sorry, Councilor DePiro. Move for favorable action. Second. <coughs> On item 28, favorable action. Councilor Capone? No. Councilor DeFlorio? Yes. 
Councilor DePiro. Yes. Councilor Hanlon. Yes. Councilor Marchese. Excuse me, what's the... This is for the $10.5 million purchase. Uh, no. Councilor Matuski. Oh, excuse me, hold it. Yes. I'm for it, yes. Councilor Matu Matuski. Yes. Sorry, Councilor. Councilor McKinnon. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Napolitano. Yes. Councilor Simonelli. Yes. President, did I skip over Councilor McLaughlin? I'm sorry. Did I skip over you? Okay. I just want to make sure. Sorry. And Councilor Delasola. Yes. That would be 10 yeas, 1 nay. Uh, you have so passed the order. Eighteen. Spend the rules. What? What? It's twenty-six. File for reconsideration. Second. All in favor to reconsider. Councilor Capone. What? Yes. Councilor De, uh, De Florio. No. Councilor De Piro. No. No. Councilor Hanlon. No. Councilor Marchese. No. Councilor Matuski. No. Councilor McKinnon. No. Councilor Napolitano. No. Councilor Minnelli. No. And no. President Dillison. No. no. One yay, nine nays. You have failed to pass reconsideration. I do want... 28. Yes, sir. That was 27 and 28. Both pass. Reconsiderations failed. I, I do want to... 27 and 28. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm just telling you. 27 and 28 both passed is what I was just saying, yes. And reconsideration, yes. I just wanted to inform you. And um, please note we have um, a bunch of appointments and also we have a business owner here, so I don't, um, I think, uh, two business owners. So if, we, if we'd like to take those. Can those, we take uh, items 12 through 20 collectively? They're all, uh, they're all approvals, right? Uh, actually, all the way to 23 because the committee met on those ones also. Yes, if we could so do 12 all to of them, 23 collectively. Please. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Close the eye <coughs> 12 to 23. Collectively. Okay. Councilors and Mr. President, all items 12 through 23 are um, petitions offered by um, President Council. Their license petitions offered by Councilor Richard J. Della Sola, Jr. as President. The 12 is for a renewal of a lodging house license for the Marlboro at 51 Chelsea Street. 13 is a renewal for a lodging house at 59 Chelsea Street. 14 is a renewal for a lodging house at 322-324 Ferry Street. 15 is a renewal for a lodging house at 312-314 Broadway. 16 is a renewal for a motor dealer uh, for Affordable Auto Mechanic, Inc. at 83 Vine Street. 17 is a renewal for Everett Used Cars, Inc. at 70 Chelsea Street. Uh, 18 is a renewal for... Best Cars Auto Sales at 3 Everett Ave. 19 is a renewal for a second class motor, uh, excuse me, third class uh, motor dealer uh, for 2nd Street Iron and Metals at 285 2nd Street. 20 is a renewal for a class 2 motor dealer uh, Circle Auto Body Inc. at 26 Thorndike Street. 21 is a, uh, this is a report from CBD this evening uh, for a new um, lodging house license at 51 Cottage Street. Yeah, we're going to have to vote on these separately anyway, so I, we're just going to read them collectively. Cottage Street by uh, BREC-LLC, 22, is a new lodging house license for 450 Ferry Street owned by BREC-LLC, and 23 is a new lodging house license for 11-13 Ellsworth Street owned by BREC-LLC. Fable action on all the orders. I, uh, yes, because they have one in committee, you're good. Um, I know yeah, we, have we have to vote to on them uh, individually. Yes, yes. yes. I'll be working on this the next meeting to so make it a little more streamlined. No, we don't do that. Yes, I know those. That's, but I'm going to help you for the next meeting. Trust me, I'm I'm, I'm working on something. Uh, because because they're not one piece. Uh, going forward, what I'm going to do is going to put the two class, motor class uh, two dealers all in one agenda item, and that's the way to do it. If you want to do just if you want to do it that way, voted on them, I would accept it. But you, just because they're all different, I can't. Mr. Does President, I'd like to make a motion. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilor Matuski. My mistake. I'd like to make a motion that we take all the lodging house licenses. Absolutely. You uh, can was do it that. 12, 15, 12, 13, 12, 13 14, 15. 15. Uh, these are renewals. Yeah, these are uh, renewals. All renewals. But they. I just like to mention, uh, Mr. President, that. Yeah. 
the owners of all these properties have actually yeah. appeared this evening, and some of them are even here now. Yep. Somebody left earlier, but 12, 13, they have made an uh, you 14, know attempt to at least be here. 15. And uh, for, yes. I, for one, appreciate that. Yeah, Mr. Fustolo from Joseph's Lodge and our, our new owner here are both here to yeah. the, for their lodging house licenses. And I will take them out right now. So 12 through 15 and then 21 through 23, correct? Okay. Yes. <clears throat> On item 15 for favorable action. Councillor Capone. Yes. Councillor DeFloria. Yes. Councillor DePiro. Yes. Councillor Hamlin. Yes. Councillor Marchese. Yes. Councillor Matuski. Yes. Councillor McKinney. Yes. Councillor McLaughlin. Yes. Councillor Napolitano. Yes. Councillor Simonelli. Yes. President Della Sola. Yes. 11 yeas, zero nine, uh, excuse me, 11 yeas, zero nays for items 12 through 15 and 21 through 23. Um, would you like to take all the class two motor dealers? Yeah, yes. motion made to take tw uh, uh, 12 16, to 17. 15 to 20, uh, 16 to 20 collectively. Excluding, Move for favorable action. Excluding uh, 19. 19, that's a motor three dealer. <clears throat> oh, motor three, okay. 16, 17, 18, 18, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 21, 22, and 23. Correct. Excluding 19. Correct. Is that a, I have mm -hmm. the motion? Correct. All in favor? Aye. No, roll call. Yeah, no, no, no. no. call it. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor Florio. Yes. Councilor DePiro. Yes. Councilor Ham. Yes. Councilor Marchese. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Uh, I said Councilor McKinley. Yes. Steve, I'm sorry. Uh, Councilor Napolitano. Yes. Councilor Simpelli. Yes. President Della Sola. Yes. 11 years. Oh, can we get that piece up? 16 so I can get out of through 18 and 20 have Christmas all been passed. Uh, and then 19 would be the only sole uh, piece by itself. If we could have that in the motion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, motion made, uh, favorable action number 19. Second motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Councilor Capone? Yes. Councilor Florio? Yes. Councilor DePiro? Yes. Councilor Hamlin? Yes. Councilor Marchese? Yes. Councilor Matuski? Yes. Councilor McKinnon? Yes. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Napolitano? Yes. Councilor Simonelli? Yes. And President Della Sola? Yes. 11 yeas, 0 nays, you have passed all renewals. Uh, they will be ready Thursday please, if anyone's could in the please audience. Please suspend the and take item number 32. Second. Mm, 32, which yes. one? Short term record. Yep. BB. Item 32. Uh, uh, is it Mr. President's ordinance offered by Councilor Richard J. L. Sola, Jr. as President? In accordance with the provisions of Section 12 of the Zoning Ordinance of the City of Everett, the City Council hereby amends the Zoning Ordinance as follows, adding new Section 34 short-term rentals. This is back before you because Councilor Hanlon has reconsidered the piece. So it will be back before Favorable you. Favorable action for the audit. Uh, yeah. For reconsideration, okay. and then this is for enrollment. I did want to mention one thing before. This will be a night where, for the first time in a while, if you approve this, this will go over into the new branch of government. So you're going to enroll it. And the new branch were ordained it that is allowed under the Mullins rule, which uh, was created a while back, and we've accepted back in 2013. I just wanted to let you know the, uh, uh, that you. we're doing something different. I just wanted to, uh, in 30, case so. the public needs to know why it happened to. Thank you. That was seconded and need a roll call, please. Yep. This will be for enrollment, as I stated. One moment, please. Um, all right. This is again for enrollment. And. Councillor Capone. Yes. Councillor DeFlori. Yes. Councillor DePiro. Yes. Councillor Hamlin. Yes. Councillor Marchese. Yes. Councillor Matuski. Yes. Councillor McKinnon. Yes. Councillor McLaughlin. Yes. Councillor Napolitano. Yes. Councillor Simonelli. Yes. And President Della Sola. Yes. That would be 11 yeas, zero nays. You have so enrolled. Can you make a please? Thank you. Thank you. Um, are we reverting back and we'll do all the 30? No, wait, wait, wait. Do you want to revert, revert back? I don't see reconsideration. I, oh, I, it was I'm enrollment, not. so you don't need to reconsider oh, this okay. piece. It's not ordainment. Yeah, yeah there's no other pieces. So, Councilors, we're fine. almost there. All right, Sorry. back to the <laughs> regular order business, um, Councilor Capone. Or back fine? to regular business, please. Yeah. We're, not bad. Number three. we're going to go back to three. We're going to do them in order. Three. Okay, item number three. It's uh, an ordinance offered by my, uh, Councilor Michael K. Marchese that the city shall use 70% of, 75 percent of the revenue that this, they receive from Anker to put towards taxes. This was vetoed by his honor, the mayor, in accordance with Massachusetts general laws. Um, I, in accordance with Mass general laws, I do. I there was uh, there's precedent that sets um, the separation of 
uh, mayor and city council, and under our charter and under Mass General Laws and under um, case law, uh, it, it is not allowed, the city council is not allowed to us in have the mayor uh, or request the mayor to spend s specific money. He brings the money before you and you decide at that point how much of it you would like to cut from it if you want to spend less. That's the process. Um, there is case law. I, I think you all received the notification. If not, I just want to let you know why it was vetoed. It was not for, it's, it's just a requirement under the laws that, you know, it's super, you're supersede, trying to supersede the mayor. It's not allowed. I, Council Marquise. <clears throat> yeah, uh, so the, 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 the yes, but the, the, what the, the issue is is that you, the legislative branch, and, and Mr. Demas can be here, but the legislative branch can't inform this, the administrative branch on how much to, to set. That's, that's the really the nuts and bolts of it. But, I mean, if you want a more in-depth explanation, the CFO is there, but that's the best I can do. Councilman Marchese, did you say call for the question? Yes. Yeah. Never second? So this is to override the mayor's veto? Yes. Which will require uh, a two-thirds vote, he, but... He, council call for the question. Yes, Michael, the only could, thing he can do is ask a question on, on if he doesn't understand why, what we're voting on. Other than Mr. That, President, to through you for Councilman Simonelli, could Councilman council no, Marquise withdraw his motion the mayor's veto to, have, to put it into an ordinance? Uh, Representative Deem has come before us. Uh, he'd, he'd, have to re he'd have to remove his motion for... No, Mike, just call for the question. Yes, it's call for the council question. Council call for the question. That's it. So, so he's... Okay, this is to override the mayor's veto. Roll call, please. Uh, Council Capone. Yes. Council De uh, De Pierre. What's what? No. Yeah, you. Right? Yes. <coughs> All right. Councilor, I'm sorry, De Piero said no. Councilor Hanlon. No. Councilor Marchese. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor Mc. Yes. Uh, Councilor DeFleur, you said yes. Councilor DeFoy, do you say yes? This, this is to override the mayor's veto. It's a 75 percent. Councilor, it's to override the veto. And Councilor Mc, uh, McLaughlin, the same thing. So you know what, just so you know what you're voting. I'm taking my vote Okay, that's fine. Councilor McLaughlin, to override the veto. Yes. Councilor Napolitano. No. Councilor Simonelli. No. Councilor Del, uh, President Delisola. No. That would be four yeas, six nays. You have um, failed to override the mayor's veto. The veto stands. It's funny how things change from the uh, September with the 10.5. Clerk, you read number four <laughs> on the agenda, please. Uh, item number. Mr. Chairman, can we take item number four, five, six, seven, and eight? These are all appointees for the Library Board of Trustees. Yep. Can we also suspend Rule 20? Yes, thank you, uh, Councilor. Second Clark. motion on Rule 20. All right. Is that four to what? Uh, I believe it's four eight. to eight. Those are all the Library Board of Trustees appointees. Um, with the suspended of rules, we suspended Rule 20. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> um, you you want to vote on these all together because uh, they're all Please. library, or yeah. you would like to do it could, individually? Yeah. Can we t uh, if we could? Because it's all Mr. library. Council Capone. Thank you. If we could take the items collectively, uh, one vote be cast in the affirmative, and our clerk record it accordingly. Yep. From four okay. through, because they're all library board. Four to eight. Four through eight. They're the library board of trustees. Okay. Um, and you're going to vote on all of them collectively because they're all library. Council Capone. Yes. Council De Florio. Yes. Council De Piero. Yes. Councilor Hanlon. Yes. Councilor Marchese. Councilor. Councilor Marchese. Yes. yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilman McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Napolitano. Yes. Councilor Simonelli. Yes. And President Dallasola. Yes. Ten yeas, zero nays. You have passed items four through eight uh, for reappointment. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can we please. take items number nine and ten collectively? These are both appointed. These to the DPW Commission Board. All in favor to read nine and ten collectively. Would you like nine? Yep, thank you. Um, Excuse me. Uh, these are both appointments. Item number nine is an appointment for uh, Mr. Anthony Medeiros as a member of the DPW Commission for two years beginning 1223. Item 10 is an appointment for Mark Puglio as a DPW Commission board member for a term of three years beginning 1223. Um, we have a motion for fable action seconded for both, right? 
Yes. Did I hear that, Councilor? One vote be cast. That clerk recorded. One vote for nine and ten. Absolutely. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor DeFloria. Uh, Councilor DePiro. Yes. Councilor Hamm. Yes. Councilor yes. Marchese. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Paltano. Yes. Councilor Simonelli. Yes. And President Della Sola. Yes. That would be nine yeas, zero nays for items nine and ten. Read number eleven, please. And uh, no. last appointment, item yes. number eleven, is for minutes, uh, appointment offered by Rich Council Richard, uh, President uh, Council Richard just J. Della Sola Jr. That the Everett City Council hereby approves the appointment of Joan Lavecchio as a member of the Board of Health for a term of two years, beginning 12-23-19. <laughs> Second. Just need a second. Second. Thank you. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor DePiro. Yes. Councilor Hamlin. Yes. Councilor Marchese. For an appointment. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Napolitano. Yes. Councilor Simonelli. Yes. President Della Sola. Yes. Nine yeas, zero nays. You have so passed that appointment. Um, we're off to number 24, correct? <coughs> Under unfinished business, item 24 is a resolution offered by Councilor Michael J. McLaughlin that the Director of Community Development provide an update on the status of Rossetti Park on Tremont Street and if there are future plans for this park. Council Ma McLaughlin. Mr. President, thank you, Mr. President. I have had great uh, discussions and uh, conversations with Mr. Souza regarding this, and at this time I want to refer it back to the sponsor. We'll reintroduce it in the spring and talk about progress moving forward. But I know that the progress is moving forward on this park, and I'm very pleased that in the coming year the residents will see uh, great work uh, being done on the site. So I want to thank him for his work. I also finally want to be able to thank him for getting all of the vehicles removed off his Rossetti Park. It only took seven months, but it got done. And I want to thank him for his efforts on getting that done. So I'll make a motion to refer this back to sponsor. Second motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Read number 25, please. Item 25 is an ordinance offered by Councilor Richard J. Della Sola, Jr. As president, that the Everett City Council hereby approves a small cell wireless facility ordinance. This was enrolled as amended. Uh, by I believe Councillor Capone made some amendments. Uh, it has been posted, and this is uh, up for ordainment this evening. Favorable action. Second motion. Uh, so this is ordainment as amendment. As amended, as excuse amended. me. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting late. Yeah. Tongue tied. <clears throat> Councillor Capone. Yes. Councillor DeFlorio. Yes. Councillor DePiro. Yes. Councillor Hamlin. No. Councillor Mark. Yes. Yes. Did you say yes, Mr. Councilor? Yes, I'm sorry. Did. Thank you. Councilor Matuski? Yes. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Politano? Yes. Councilor Simonelli? No. And President Della Sola? Yes. Um, we have three, six, eight. Yes, two nays. You have so ordained as amended the small cell ordinance. <clears throat> Item 26 is an ordinance offered by Councilor Richard J. Delso Jr. as president. That the Everett City Council hereby amends the current driveway ordinance section seven, uh, excuse me, 17-58. Uh, this was enrolled the last agenda, uh, last meeting, and this is up for ordainment, this, uh, this meeting. Um, call, please. <clears throat> for ordainment, favorable action, Councilor Capone. Yeah. Councilor DeFlorio. Yeah. Councilor DePiro. Yes. Councilor Hamlin. Councillor Marchese? No. Councillor Matuski? Yes. Councillor uh, McLaughlin? Yes. Councillor Napolitano? Yes. Councillor Simonelli? No. And President Del Sol? Yes. That would be three, six. We have seven yeas, three nays. You have ordained the ordinance. Um, is there one piece Last left? Item 33. Yeah is an order offered by Councilor John F. Hanlon to request the approval of the State Legislature to amend Section 2-8 of the City Char Every Charter Appointments of the City Council. Um, Councilor DeFlorio. Do you want the sponsor? 33. 33. No, no, we did, we did uh, 26, the driveway ordinance. This is for the Charter Amendment. This is the last piece. Yeah, no, that, that's that's not this. This is the Charter Amendment. 
for the city council appointments. He is. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> He's looking at the other piece. I worked a little bit with Gosh. Councilor Hamlin on this, and, I, and there's not really much changes. The city clerk knows about it. It just kind of cleans up language. There's no changes to term length. There's yeah. no changes such yeah. as that. It cleans up a lot of language. It's, it's the half that you put on the last time, not the first half that you didn't that you didn't uh, want. It's just the second portion. Uh, and, and then we also separated the clerk of the council to have its own appointment because on the state statute, only town clerks are required under the Mass General Law to uh, have to do it. So you want to have two separate appointments. That's Fair the only left. separation of appointments. But that way you'll give whoever, if it's me, you'll give me two different appointments, one for clerk and one for clerk of the council. They should be separated. After reading Mass General Laws, only town clerks are required under statute. So it's the only uh, amendments. You were all emailed, I believe, and mailed the pieces on Friday. Yeah. Fable action. Cal Call for the question. No, I have, I, I have to. Matuski has the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I just want the council to be aware that through a home rule petition, you can change the charter. Absolutely. This is a case in point. Now, I will be uh, presenting uh, an ordinance, Mr. President, in January that will require candidates uh, representing a ward will live in the you, uh, exclusive to the ward. In other words, the ward three councilman will be strictly voted on in Ward 3, not citywide. Let's straighten that out. And it can be changed through the okay. home rule petition to the State House. So just want the members to be aware of that. Don't be uh, smoke screened here. Thank you. I get <laughs> Council, hold on, I get Council uh, McLaughlin. Mr. President, where does this go after tonight? Because it, Directly to the legislature. But the legislative year ends, so. But that, that that our legislative year ends, right. not so theirs. So then they'll just refer this back to us come the new year? Correct. Well, it goes to them. They, they make the, they have to vote on it. Okay. Yeah, they're not on our cycle. They're fiscal where we're calendar, if that makes any sense. Council Capone, do you have a question? Yeah, I, I, I don't know exactly what we're doing. I heard, I heard what was said, and <laughs> I know they put it out there. The tough thing is we're sending something to the state legislature. I hate sending out anything to an outside body without understanding completely what we're doing. And I know that the intentions are probably pure, and I have the utmost respect for my colleague, but it being on our very last agenda right before, I'm uncomfortable with it. I really don't want to see us send something out at this point. I'd rather it just be introduced next session. I don't know what the feeling of the body is about that. I don't, I don't want to be sending something out that I don't know what it is. Then I'm going to, I'm going to invoke a charter objection on the 29C, and it's done. Councilor Politano. It's done. It stops. All right. So we just call for the question. We adjourn. Charter, if the objection under the charter, 29C, if all debate stops, it automatically postpones to our next special or regular meeting upon the objection for one member. And I'm invoking that objection. Before we adjourn, Mr. President, uh, with that all good and said, I want to wish everyone here and at home a Merry Christmas, Happy Holiday Season, Happy and Healthy New Year. I wish you all the health and happiness in the world to you and your family, to my Council colleagues and the people of Everett. Thank Councilman you. Matuski. Thank you. I, I agree with Councilman DePiro, but I want to wish Councilman McKinnon, Council President Della Sola, and my good friend, not my best friend, my good friend, Steve Simonelli. And uh, I want to thank them for their service to this community, and I want to wish the citizens of this community who have supported me over the years a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I just want to say hello to my mother. She's watching this evening. I'll be home early tonight, I can assure you that. Ma. <laughs> Anybody else want a yeah. Christmas greeting? Uh, Councilman uh, McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I also want to echo the comments of my colleagues and wish the residents of Everett a happy, safe, and joyous, prosperous New Year and Christmas. It's been an honor to serve on the City Council with each and every one of you. This evening, we lose three great members of the Everett City Council, three people that I highly respect and look up to and think that have done a tremendous job in making a difference in our community. They will be missed, but I know that they will be around. I wish my family, friends, and the community a happy and healthy holiday season. Thank you.
Council Marchese. I'm just going to make it short and sweet. Just Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah and Happy Holidays to trying to cover all bases on this. Uh, I hope everybody uh, uh, comes back ready to do a little work here. Welcome the new um, uh, members here uh, next year. And I'm sure we'll be seeing our old uh, members in, uh, very shortly. I mean, it's only a year it starts all over again. But I'd like to uh, Happy New Year and to everybody here. Just stay healthy and let's... Uh, Let's enjoy ourselves and let's uh, do what we're supposed to do for the city of Boston. Councilor Palatino. You know, what can be said that hasn't already been said? So having said that, all I can say is ditto. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody Council have a happy Thank you. and prosperous Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank, Thank you, Council. And, yeah, I want to extend my well wishes to my colleagues and to all the folks out there. And I do also want to express my sincere gratitude to Councilor Simonelli, to former Councilor Sire, to Councillor McKinnon and to yourself, not only for the work that you've done here, but the work you've done in this community outside of this chamber. So I appreciate it. I know the people at home appreciate it. Uh, I wish everyone happy holidays, healthy new year, and look forward to our new members coming aboard next year. Thank you, Councillor Mr. Chairman. Go Everett. Go Everett. <laughs>